Hello and welcome to Crucible of Words for yet more dedicated legacy action. Today we are continuing with December and we've got a real spicy one here. So this is Bant Depths, which I can't say is a configuration I've ever seen before. We've got a lot to talk about in this one, so I'm going to jump right into it. So we do have three Dark Depths and three Thespian Stage. This is how we're going to make our 2020. Now we've got all sorts of other weird and wonderful things around it. So we've got four exploration, so we're going to be a bit towards the sort of Lansy type deck. We've got these two Elvish Reclaimers, which is a weird number of Elvish Reclaimers, but that's what we've got. We've got three crop rotations, and these are the things that are going to try and find us our lands. We also have a full playset of Life from the Loam to try and generate some card advantage and dig into our deck and find the bits and pieces we're looking for. Because we're a slower build, we're not looking to ghost quarter our, our opponents, we've got our wastelands. We've got a few Maze of Us to keep us alive. We've got a Field of the Dead to hopefully pull us ahead in the later game. We've got a Yavimaya Cradle of Growth, a Tabernacle, a Sejiri Step to Find with our Crop Rotation, a Caracas, an Ipnu Rivulet. So this can mill us, hopefully looking for Life from Alone. We've got a Hall of Heliod's Generosity. So this can put enchantments back on top of our library. So this means if we mill over an exploration we want one, we can go and fish it out with our Life from Alone getting this. And then getting our Hall of Heliod into play. And we also have these two Shark Typhoons, which can kind of do a bit of work with us. And if we get our Hall of Heliod's Generosity and we're Life from the Loaming, we can just sort of set up a Shark Typhoon every turn, which is pretty cool. Not, uh, we've got Blast Zone and we've got Paducah Bog. These are sort of all of our singleton and business lands. And the rest of this is sort of mana, our, our combo, and sort of the wastelands, which are pretty standard. So we are a snow covered forest deck because we are running. Three Ice Fang Kotal. No idea on the numbers on this one. This is a 5-0 list that I was sent that looked really bizarre. I thought I'd give it a go. We've got a few control spells in the form of Source to Plowshares. We've got these four Mox Diamonds to go alongside our exploration, just sort of power things out so we can try and do turn one life from the loam and then get stuff back and just keep cycling again and again and again and going around our deck. And we've got this one-off Stifle, which again seems a very peculiar number of this card to have to me. But, like I said, this was a 5-0 decklist from a user called Ali, who, yeah, seemed like a, a weird deck, so I thought I'd give it a go. This is spicy December time, so now is the time to play this. So, quite how this deck plays out, I'm not entirely sure. I'm imagining it's going to be quite a slow, grindy, controly type deck. But we have the ability to be a little bit explosive, so we're just going to see how this pans out, really. It's quite a, quite a weird mishmash of cards, and I'm excited to get into it. Sideboard-wise... We've got an additional source of plowshares, in case we need to kill some more creatures. We have three fluster storms, so land style decks are traditionally very bad against storm. So this is to try and help against that. We've got two hydroblasts, so this is just a catch-all answer to blood moon. So this is a good reason, I like running blue for that particular reason. We have this one dress down, which is going to be used against things like Urza Saga tokens and such like. It's also important to note that we don't have our own Urza Saga plan here either. We've got three endurance, just because it's a really good... Graveyard hate piece, but it's also a creature that can beat down, which we might need, and we're probably going to want this in Delver matchups as well. A couple of Chalice, again, for combo matchups with the Flusterstorm. So when we're Flusterstorming, we're also looking at Chalicing as well. What you can do as well is when you have Chalice in play, you can cast a Flusterstorm through it yourself, because the Storm is when you cast the spell, so you get the copies, but the first one is counted. However, we're probably going to be putting the Chalice on zero when we do play it. And we've got three Force of Vigor. You know, just a standard cyborg card to blow some stuff up. And that's more or less where we lie. It's uh, it's certainly an interesting one. Quite how it's going to play out, I'm not sure. Maybe it, uh, science has gone too far on this one. Maybe it's just on the edge of brilliance. We'll see. Um, I don't really have much else to say about it. So before we jump into the league with it, let me just say, likes, comments, subscribe. These things cost you nothing, but they really help me out. So why not do that? Also, share my content as well if you like it. All right, plug done. Let's jump into a game with Bant Depths. Round one, and we're on the play. This is what our opening hand looks like. What to do with this is a little bit tricky. We can just start a Life from Alone game and go that way. That seems pretty fine to me. We can lead out on Snow Covered Basic as well. So, yeah, we'll keep this. Our opponent's mulligan to six cards. Play this one out. So we're getting wherever we put back anyway so we're just going to get rid of this tabernacle for now and we'll get this and we can either life from the loam now or we can hold up crop rotation for the bog 
These are two options that we have here. I think we're just going to life them alone now so we can start dredging. Reanimator has fallen off quite a lot in the format right now from where it once was. So I don't think holding up the Paducah bog for a turn one reanimate is going to be the smartest move we can do. If I put a mold to five or something like that or went really low looking for something like Echo Aeons, then maybe we could do something with that. But I think we just do our best game plan. Ancient Tomb. So my assumption is our opponent's playing Initiative. That's probably the most common Ancient Tomb deck right now. And probably the best Ancient Tomb deck as well. Mishra's Bauble. Okay, so it's looking more like 8 cast. Interesting. So we've got Fopters covered with our Tabernacle, but they know that because we discarded it. Okay, a chance for 0. We've already played out our 0 drops, so this is fine for us. But they're probably just trying to get Metalcraft rather than worrying too much. The chance for 0 really hurts them, though. Okay, so they've just conceded. Chalice for zero play, very weird to me. Um, maybe our opponent's new to the deck. Okay, so we know these Force of Vigors are going to do something here, right? We've seen, we've seen that. We can play our own Chalices. If they are playing uh, eight cast, we're going to want zero drops here. Which means we maybe want to be cutting our Mox Diamonds. And how useful is this Stifle going to be? So we have some other options. We can use Flusterstorm to protect some of our spells, but we're not really trying to do that. We can use Dress Down for Urza Saga tokens. I like that as a plan. We've got, if we're expecting their eight casts, which with the Chalice, like so Mox Diamond and Ancient Tomb could be like some sort of storm list. But the fact they had the Chalice makes you think they are on eight cast, which means crop rotations are worse. So maybe we're dropping the crop rotations so we can include our Dress Down, maybe just a couple of Endurances to clean up Emery Graveyards a little bit. As we've got any lands that aren't useful here. All of these seem pretty good. The Maze of Iths are okay, they're not spectacular here, but they're okay. So I think we probably run it like this and see how that goes for us. Diversifies our curve a little bit as well. Okay, we'll try it like this. It's going to be harder to make a 2020 without the crop rot rotations in the deck. Okay, so this hand covers a load of their little baubly things, but our opponent is on the play. So how good is that going to be? We are one card away from making a 2020. We've got a lot of lands here. Our hand is very slow. I think we should mulligan into more action. Uh, yeah, we got some wastelands, I guess. Um, so we've kind of got like a wastelandy lock here. We'll probably get rid of one of these. We get to play our Chalice of the Void for zero and start wastelanding our opponent. We do probably need to get our life from the low map and running before we start wastelanding because we need green mana. And we only have one green, well, we only have one green mana at the moment. So if we wasteland, we need an additional mana source of some description. Like we have quite a lot, you know, we're more or less a land stack, but we're going to need the mana from the wasteland to cast a life from the loam unless we draw something. Ancient Tomb from our opponent. And they've just passed. Okay. Tabernacle. So I think we cast this for zero. And then we have a choice here. We can wasteland our opponent. That'll leave us requiring mana later on. But I think it's the correct play here. If our opponent goes Ancient Tomb and does nothing, that makes me think that they're going to need a lot of mana to get themselves up and running. Right, you normally see that from like an eight cast hand that's going Ancient Tomb, turn two, sigh, and a load of zero drops. Pithineal. So this is going to name Thespian Stage, I have to imagine. Could be Wasteland though. Wasteland, okay, yeah. So they're going for the protective line. That's fine. We have a Force of Vigor for when the time comes. So I see no reason not to play our Savannah here. We have Force of Vigor and an Ice Fang to pitch to it. So we could just blow up both our opponent's permanents right now. But I think we can do better than hitting the Seat of the Synod. If they miss land drops, then we're into that. But as it stands, sigh. Okay, yeah. So they're going to be casting a load of zero drops here. They're going to get hit by the Chalice. They're not going to get the extra value. But they're still going to get one ones. But I think we can blow up their their two lands and then force them into Ancient Tomb activations here. So we can blow up Pithy Needle and see the Synod here. I like this. And we'll pitch this Ice Fang. And then we can play out Tabernacle. We can play out Exploration. So we just need a green source here and we're up and running. Or a, any mana source and we're up and running. So... Because we're only drawing one card turn, I guess we could have played out the Dark Depths. Maybe there's no reason not to there. Maybe I'm being a bit cautious keeping it in my hand there. So they can... Ancient Tomb... So they're paying two life to deal us two damage. 
This is not a clock that's going to do them a lot of good. We can draw a mana source, we can waste land the next turn and just shred their entire board. It's not very merit largely, but such is life sometimes. Okay, so we have this. Cast life and loan, targeting wasteland. Green and blue. So they have a force of negation, they probably want to spend it on here. So we get to wasteland them off of that. And we've already played all our lands for turn, so. Okay, so we've got our opponent in a wasteland tabernacle lock here. And usually eight cards play like two-ish islands. So they're gonna have a bad time here. They can't play zero drops, so all their manners. Okay, yeah. So that was a pretty decisive one. I think our opponent playing the chalice for zero on t on the first game might have been a mistake. They because they had the ancient two, maybe they meant to play it on one and just misclicked. I have to assume because you wouldn't play that against a mox diamond deck anyway on zero. All right, so that was a quick one. Let's bash into round two. We're on the play. We can kind of play an ice fang game and then get some value with the life from the loam and sort of see how that pans out it's not very exciting though but i think we i don't really know what hands are going to be exceptional in this deck but this is going to sort of play out like a pretty standard looking uh sort of banty snow deck until it becomes something completely different so we can play this out we're also representing blue spells here which can impact our opponent's plays in the first turns of the game Pluto Delta, what are they getting? An Underground Sea, so that's what we call an unfair card, uh, an unfair land. That's usually in decks like Doomsday and Storm and things like that, which are on the unfair spectrum, which is going to be a hard matchup for us, truth be told. Another Ice Fang, not really what we wanted. So we're probably getting two basics here. Uh, actually, no, we, this is our only, is this our only snow-covered island? I think we're probably waiting to end a turn here and then we're going to go and crack some fetches. So this one is going to be one of our basics, I think. We can go and get a basic island. And then off this one we can go and get a trop or a tundra. All right, we don't have a tundra in our deck, do we? No, it's a savannah that we have. So we get snow covered here and then this gets us... And we're going to life from the loan back anyway, so this will probably be a trop. We cast our little snakey boy, snake bird. And we get to card. Okay. That gets us towards a combo. That certainly gets us towards a combo, doesn't it? Um, interesting. We can't play this in a way that gives us mana to do our other bits and pieces, can we? So I think we are playing out this Thespian stage. And then we're attacking and deploying the other snake. And then next turn we can just make a 20-20. I think our opponent's probably going to kill us in the very near future. I'm leaning more towards our opponent being Doomsday here. So looking to do a Brainstorm with fetch land in a turn here. I have to imagine that they're round about on that spectrum of Doomsday. Okay, two Underground Seas. Definitely getting Doomsday vibes. This could just be land into... Okay, Preordain. You don't see Preordain in the Doomsday decks that often. It's more usually the um, Ponder, Brainstorm, Consider. So this could be more of like an Ad Nauseum Tendril style deck. Which has been creeping up in popularity a little bit lately. Not sure why personally, but... So if we play out this Dark Depth, our opponent's going to know they have to go. But we should probably play the thing that represents a kill. Do this. We'll attack our opponent for as many life points as we can for the purposes of Ad Nauseum. So our opponent's got this turn, and then we're dead. I suspect. If they can't kill us though, then we do get to kill them. Okay, so we're still sculpting over there. If they don't have it, they might just concede rather than show us some of the cards in their hand. But if they've got even a chance, I think they're going to go for it this turn. I would quite like information of exactly what combo deck they're playing. Because Preordain is not a card you see in fair decks. A scrubland. Okay. So maybe this is Doomsday, because sometimes they have a scrubland for the Monastery Mentor or Cyborg Plan. Baleful Strix. Okay. Yeah, that certainly does stuff. Hmm. I'm a little bit stumped as to the exact configuration of our opponent's deck here. So let's make a 2020. With only Black Manor open. If they had left the Scrubland open, I would have been more worried that they'd have something like a Source of A Caracas. Um, I think this turn we are... Are we playing around? I don't think we're playing around um, days here. 
I don't want to daze our life from alone. That's probably not the worst thing in the world. So we're going to get these back so we can basically reload for the combo next turn as well. Our main deck... Um, okay, another brainstorm. Our main deck, Force of Negation, is very good because it exiles the life from alone. Let's get all these lands back in our hand. Force of Will. Spell Pierce entered the exile zone. Okay, so I think we are playing out our Thespian stage here. And we're going to attacks. Spell Pierce, Brainstorm, Ponder. I really don't know what our opponent's deck is here. Force of Will on the life from alone is interesting to me. Ponder. I would like to see a bit more of my opponent's deck, but obviously if we win, that's not the end of the world either. Preordain. Okay. So if they are playing like an Esper Doomsday type list, then it's going to be very hard for them to kill us, for us, them to kill us this turn, because they have to Dark Ritual into Doomsday and then have a way of drawing a card and have some mana. It's only possible. If that's what they're doing. Just another Strix, I see. Oh, Kalidokali. Okay, so we will, we will dredge our lane this turn. It's the easiest way of hitting a Sejiri step. Okay, there's the Sejiri step. Don't mind if I do. It's Dark Depths, and we'll have another Thespian stage. Play this. This can get pro blue. Okay, so we win that match, and I don't know what my opponent is playing, truth be told. I kind of get the impression they're on, like, something a bit combo-y. Like, it could be Esper Doomsday with a load more control -y elements. That's certainly possible. But I don't really know. I think a Dress Down over one of these plows probably okay. I don't know if our opponent's trying to utilise their graveyard. Maybe we just want more creatures. So maybe we're looking at boarding out a couple of these plows for Endurances because we didn't see much apart from the little guy. Um, probably boarding in Graveyard Hate, but I don't really think that have too much for that. Like we could play a Chalice for one, but I don't, don't really think that's where we want to be. If they are playing a Fassa's Oracle deck, we have the Stifle for that. Now, if they are playing Doomsday with Mentors, though, we will want these soft plows in, thinking about it. So they actually probably will be better than the Endurances. Um, against Counter Spade deck, the Typhoon might be pretty good here. Damn. Until we see more, it's hard to know exactly where we want to go. Maybe because we saw a lot of Counter Magic, we'll take... We'll Trim one of our crop rots. Um, okay, so we're basically just a dress down for a crop rot is what we've kind of decided on here. Fluster can do some stuff, but again, I just don't have enough information about what our opponent's putting down. Maybe we'll try a couple of crop rots for flusters. There's not really much I want to force through here, though, but we can counter an actual doomsday with them. They might not see that coming. We'll try like this. The amount of cantrips we saw, I don't think it's unreasonable to assume our opponent has mentors in their deck. Uh, we've got turn one Ice Fang into Flusterstorm Shark Typhoon. That seems fine. It's not really uh, the A plan of this deck, I don't think, but we'll keep it. They've mulliganed to six cards. So we get rid of one of our snow covered forests. This means our Ice Fang is not going to have Death Touch unless we life them alone because we have three snow covered lands in our deck, as far as I can recall. Polluted Delta. And they're cracking it, so I'm expecting a Ponder or a Preordain this turn. A personal tutor. Okay, so they are Esper Doomsday with Mentors. Yep, sure. So, I think we do our Exploration first. Okay, so that just went straight in. So, then we play out this Misty Rainforest. We play out this Mox Diamond. Pitching our Snow Cold Forest. And now we're holding up Ice Fang or Flusterstorm here. So we can Flusterstorm the Doomsday. And we can pay around on opposing days. There's a Scrubland. There's that rich. We'll crack this first. We don't have to worry about what mana we get here. Um, in terms of basics and non-basics. So we're just going to go for the Tropical Island here. Okay, so you can have your Dark Ritual. So we'll cast this for blue. And we all try and Flusterstorm this. So we're going to have three copies on this. So if they have a, another Dark Ritual, they can pay. But they have to specifically have Dark Ritual. Okay, so we've got the first Doomsday gone. Now, our deck isn't very quick, so it's going to be a little bit hard for us to close this one. So maybe we're looking at making a 2-2 Shark this turn. So we're either making a 2-2 Shark or we're making the Ice Fang. Those are our options. So if we make the 2-2 Shark, then if we make the Ice Fang and draw a land, we hit them for one this turn, and then 
the turn after we're hitting them for four. So if we make the two two sharp, we hit them for two this turn and then two the next turn with the ice fang. Okay, that changes things. I think we make the ice fang here. Let's see if they trade. Out comes the ice fang. Draw a card. A mox diamond. Not great. An Ipnu rivulet. Okay, would I rather have this in play or would I rather have the mox diamond in play? I think this is actually better for the purposes of trying to mill our bits and pieces as we go. So let's see what happens when we attack. Okay, they're just going to take the damage here. So if they attack, then we can make a 3-3 shark and get hit in with it, which I like. If we can find a wasteland, we can start hitting our opponent's mana base as well. Teferi Time Raveler. Sure, so we can make our shark typhoon and kill this if they attack here. Yep, okay, so we got them. Because we can still use abilities. So cycling, we're going this, this, this can be blue. This is one, X is currently three. Let's make a three, three shark and draw a card. We don't quite get to kill the Teferi, but we get to do a lot of damage to it. Nice fang. Shark draw here. Another shark typhoon. That's a pretty good one. So these are all coming at Teferi. We have a lot of options for our turn as well. We can make another Ice Fang to kill a Teferi. Well, we can't make the Ice Fang actually, can we? Because of the Teferi. But we can make another Shark Typhoon. A Lotus Petal. Same play as last time. Let's make 3 3 Shark. We're going to lose one of these to the Drix, unfortunately. But that is the way the cookie crumbles sometimes. Thinking about doing something in our upkeep, perhaps? Okay. So let us draw. So I think we just go to our turn. Attack everything at Teferi. We lose one of our sharks, but that's fine. Plow on our shark, sure. So we're not going to be able to kill the Teferi this turn. I think we're looking at casting this. We get blue off of this. No, probably the Mox Diamond in case they have another Teferi and bounce something. Makes sense. Let's see what we get off this. An Elvish Reclaimer. I'll play that guy out. We're not going to play out this Tabernacle. We could play out the Mox Diamond to give us. To make our guy a little bit bigger. I don't hate that. And this costs two, so we can rivulet ourselves at our opponent's end step to try and spike a life from the loam and maybe Hall of e Heliod to recur these or Wasteland to take our opponent's mana base to task. Sure. A 1-1 one, one snake. Uh, not snake, uh, a Strix. Sure. They haven't managed to get any value off of this Teferi either. It's just been ticking up, which is quite nice for us. So we're going to mill us for four. I'm going to sacrifice this. Pop our graveyard out. Okay, we didn't hit the life from the lane, sadly. That's the jury step. Okay, this is a pretty good one. Um, play this one out. We will give our Elvish Reclaimer protection from... Is it blue or is it black? Black's probably the way my guy dies. They might be able to bounce it, though. Tricky. I think we go for black. Dodge snuff out. I suspect they don't have anything. So attack all creatures at Teferi just in case. We might end up trading here, but we want to get rid of the Baleful Strix anyway. Sure. We spent a lot of time and effort on this Teferi, but we have a Plow, which can stop a Thassa's Oracle line if they don't have an empty library. We could mess around with our Elvish Reclaimer here and get some stuff, but I think our opponent's mana base is pretty solid. I think we are just attacking and trying to clock them before they can Doomsday us. And... I think we'll probably play this out in case we can get a Hall of Helio. We want to have loads of land to make a big Shark Typhoon that can maybe kill our opponent. I ponder, sure. So if our opponent will go to six if they cast a Doomsday this turn, I believe. So we hit them for four. So they might be incentivized to try and go off without having an empty library. So our plow might come in handy there. This was more for Monastery Mentors, but it might be able to buy us the game. But we'll see. Brainstorm. Our opponent doesn't have a fetch land. Just They just did shuffle off the ponder as well. Another land is probably not what they want to see. They're getting pretty flooded over there. Address Town. That's another level of insulation against the Thassa's Oracle. Just on a little beatdown plan here. We don't really want to play this Dress Down unless we have to. But it does give us some protection, which I'm a fan of. Terminus. That wasn't what I was expecting. Interesting. Um... Sure, I guess we let these go. Um, doesn't really matter which order. We're just about to shuffle our library anyway. Okay. Interesting. So we're going to crack our fetch this turn. Just thin out our deck a little bit. And we'll have another trop. We don't have Brainstorm in our deck, so. A Maze of Ith. 
I think I'd rather keep that in hand right now. Uh, I guess our opponent could play a whole breacher. Very unlikely, but possible. So I guess we should play out for that. We're not going to play out our dress down until we absolutely have to. Okay. We need to find some action here. That's on the way to action. So we need a Dark Depths. A Life from Alone is very good here. We can also get, get back our Rivulet and use that to power through our deck. Uh, we probably should have copied uh, a basic land with Thespian Stage End of Turn. Okay, if we're just going to draw it, that's fine too. We came here to make 2020s, so here we are. We need to do this in our opponent's end step for the purposes of Teferi. Opponent might just have bricked. They've bricked pretty hard. Okay, so our opponent drew pretty badly there. We did, we did snag them nicely with the Doomsday. I don't think the Esper build is as good as the blue-black build. But let it be known that we got lucky to win this game along the way. The, well, yeah, our opponent bricking for that many turns with that many um, cantrips. So I feel like we kind of squeaked that one a bit. All right, on to the third round. We're 2-0. and a. We've won the die roll. We can waste down our opponent into oblivion. And if we find either piece, we can crop rotate. But is that good enough? I guess we got aggro covered. We got mana base covered. Sure, I can keep this. I'm not super happy about it but i think it's fine so i think turn one we're probably looking at uh hmm, i don't even think we play out our wasteland this turn then we just play out the misty rainforest this turn i don't think we want our mox diamond either necessarily now we're at the mercy a little bit of some discard here but such is life sometimes i think we're better off playing it a little bit slower like this Okay, so our opponent's fetched a bayou, so we can hit that. Elvish Reclaimer. Okay. If they don't have any lands, they can't find more lands, right? So, snap this one off. Waste on this. Now, they will be getting their Elvish Reclaimer into 3-4 territory soon, but that's what the Maze of Ith is for. So, we kind of need our opponent to brick on lands. And then, we need to find a little bit of action. A Besage. Playing that out suggests to me that they don't really have a lot of good options. So we're going to bash us for one here. And what are we doing now? A maze of it. All right. Let's just keep wasting our opponent into the dirt. It does improve the size of their Elvish Reclaimer. But I'm okay with that. I can take one hit from this and then play the maze of it. Okay, our opponent doesn't have a land there. So that's pretty good. Well, they might have been saying and it for second main. A Bajuka Bog. Okay, so we're going to lose our graveyard. Which is a little bit annoying, actually. Okay, that to us. Oh, I thought I thought for sure that was going to be a turn we drew the uh, life from the lane because they took our graveyard out. So we have choices here. We can play the Maze of Earth to keep ourselves alive. Or we can play Thespian Stage, Mox Diamond. But that's still not enough mana to go off. Obviously, Maze of Earth doesn't really help us go off either. Unless our opponent plays a Yavimaya. So, interesting choices here. I guess we can play out the Maze of Earth. And then play out the Mox Diamond now. And if we need to, we can crop rotate our Maze of Ith end step. Um, probably the second Maze of Ith can go. Next time we can play Dark Depths. And if they play a Yavimaya, we can use that. Or we can just turn this into a Yavimaya now. But then we can't get the Dark Depths, can we? So I think we're just sitting on this for a turn. We don't really have a lot of protection. So I think we just sit here and see what our opponent attempts. Look like they were maybe going for a Thoughtseize there. If they thought these, then we crop rotate into Dark Depths. Cradle, it's a good one. A Fiend Artisan. Sure. A Shark Typhoon. That's an interesting one. Right, so let's play out our Thespian stage here. So we don't have enough mana just yet. And our opponent does get to Fiend Artisan this turn if they want to. We can just make a Shark Typhoon for one this turn as well, just to try and dig a little deeper. That's also fine. A Verdant Catacomb. So we slowed down the game for a few turns to draw us into some action. And now we're sort of at relative parity in this game, I think. Okay, so sacking the Elvish Reclaim, what are they going to find? Dried Arbor? A Caracas. Okay. And another Fiend Artisan. So I guess we get the Tropical Island here. Cycle this. So this is blue, blue and one. We get one one here and we get to kill the first Fiend Artisan. And draw ourselves a bonus card for the pleasure. A Bajuka Bog is a pretty decent one here. Now, 
we could be in a situation where we're going to be holding the four off for a little while until we find a way of dealing with our opponent's Caracas. Tabernacle. That kind of just taps down our opponent's cradle every turn. Which is which is decent, don't get me wrong. We could also Wasteland and then Tabernacle. Uh, our opponent's on four cards. I don't hate Wasteland Tabernacle here. If we Wasteland Tabernacle... Hmm. Is that really where I want to be? Maybe we can save that trick for later and just play out the tabernacle now and force the tap down of all their of their cradle. And then we can hold up the crop rotation for potential dark depths. Again, we still don't have the mana for it because there's no Yavimire in play. Sure. So they're gonna pay using their cradle, which is fine. We're just trying to stop them being able to match your order too easily this turn. Buy you, okay. So this prevents the most damage, but it does mean they get to do the sacrifice of land and find something this turn. Okay, we've got two Maze of Ist now. Now that's going to hamper our mana ability a little bit, but I can live with that. We can find a Wasteland, we can get towards comboing our opponent off. A Blast Zone. So we can Blast Zone and kill the Reclaimer, we can Blast Zone and kill a Fiend Artisan. Neither of these are amazingly exciting to me right now. I think I'd rather... I guess we've got both these creatures checked, so we don't need to do these things. I think we can just... We just Blast Zone. We don't actually have the mana to activate this right now, because this doesn't tap for mana right now. But we can Crop Rotation into Yavimaya if something becomes necessary. Three mana. And Endurance. That's fine. I'm going to shuffle our Graveyard in. Yeah, sure. That's fine. I won't mind drawing some of those cards. We have a choice at end of turn whether or not we put the counters on the Mox Diamond or not as well. Uh, on the on the Blast Zone or not. So we're going to take two this turn, I think. Unless they're just going to create Hoof Us this turn. Wirewood Symbiote. Okay. So this can save their Reclaimer. So I think we are on the Wasteland them line now. Get rid of the Cradle. We'll get rid of the two that are doing the most damage. So we only take two here. It looks like our opponent's set up for an actual order next turn. Let's see what we find. A Mox Diamond. So this allows us to make a 2020, but again, our opponent has Caracas in place, so that's not an option. So we're probably on the... Mm, so I can bounce this. I think we have to be on the Wasteland Cradle line right now. But they can go and get another one with their Reclaimer, can't they, is the only issue here. So... If we play out our Mox Diamond, okay, we want to play out our, play out our Snow Covered Forest, because we need the land to sack here. So we play this out. If we crack the Blast Zone, one, two, three mana, then we'd have to Mox Diamond in the Caracas as well for this. So if we Blast Zone, they'll save their Reclaimer, but then they can't get the Cradle to save their other guys, but then they're only going to have three guys in play anyway. Yeah, this is a tricky one. One, two, three, four, five. So we're, we're not close to the Field of the Deadline either. Oh, there's burning up quite a lot of clock on this thought. Um, Maybe we just pop the Blast Zone here. Try and take out the Wildwood Symbiote. I have to imagine that they're getting the... Okay. Interesting. What are they getting here? Sacrifice in the Forest 4. Another Dryad Arbor. Okay, we definitely have to get the Wasteland now, I think. So this means they can't natural order us next turn. Certainly not lethally. Now, if they have a um, another Cradle in hand, they can natural order, but I can protect myself from two of the guys, and that might be enough. So that'd be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yeah, so I won't be dead to that. Um, no, it'd be nine damage because they'll sacrifice one and then pump the fiend eyes on as well. Yeah, okay. Life from the Loam would be a lovely draw about now. Okay, not even bothering to go for the shenanigans of that. Saving their clock, I appreciate that. Wasteland is very good. Pajukabog also very good, but I think we are in Wasteland Town here. So we Wasteland the Caracas here, so that we might be able to assemble our Dark Depths combo soon. 
because we will need to actually win the game at some point. So if we draw Dark Depths, we can win the game. If we draw Crop Rotation, we can win the game too. So now one of these guys dies. So depending on what our opponent does, we might turn our Maze of Ith into a mana producing land. Our uh, Thespian stage, but I'm not sure if that's necessary. I think it's safer actually just to have it this way in case something does go wrong along the lines. Come on, life from alone. The value in their clock to not bother attacking, going through the rigmarole. Appreciate that. An Elvish Reclaimer of our own. This is pretty good. Yeah, green and play this guy out. We will have to pay for it with the Tabernacle. But now we can shrink our opponent's bits and pieces as well. So next turn we can go and get Dark Depths. And then the turn after we can make a 2020. And our opponent is under the gun a little bit here. Tabernacle. Pretty potent Magic the Gathering card right there. Now, if they have a Cradle, they can still Natural Order, but we can fog two of the creatures with the Maze of Ith. Now, if they have something like a Progenitus to 2-4, that's going to be more of a problem for us. Not sure we can actually beat the Progenitus if they have one. I guess they have to sack a guy, so we can take 10. No, okay, they're just letting everything die. Interesting. Snuff out on our guy. Sure. So we've kind of gone back quite a few turns now in terms of how the board is set. So our opponent's in there main phase now and an Elvish Mystic sure so this pays for itself by tapping all right what have we got a Misty Rainforest do we play out Misty Rainforest or do we leave it in our hand um I think it's worth just keeping in hand for now just make these decisions quicker because of our clock okay they let the Dried Arbor die that's a bit of a surprise to me so I guess this turn they can make a two drop is the plan so maybe they're trying to make a Fiend out as well but they can't even race that way because of my Maze of Iths. Collector Oof. That's fine. Bit awkward, but fine. A Sajiri Step. Do we care about the Sajiri Step? No, we can use that to push through an Endurance later. Now we're going to play our land. So our opponent needs to pay too, so the Mystic will pay for itself. The Collector Oof will get paid for by the, by the Bayou. And then our opponent will probably attack us, but that doesn't really matter here because we have the Maze of Iths. Cradle. Cradle's a good one. Elvish Reclaim is sure. Just crack this thin our library marginally. It does mean that we can't take a hit from Progenitus at all now, though. Uh, we've got no white right now, so we go and get the Savannah here. Will the top deck gods be kind to us? Give us a life from alone that we've been dreaming of. Come on. A dark Depths. I would like a 2020, please. Sure, so Cradle pays for all their guys. But if they have an Endurance in hand, they might not do that. Because they might just value being able to block the 2020 for one turn. Now, our opponent might have a removal spell in hand, but it doesn't look like they're playing white, so it's going to be very difficult for them to remove a indestructible guy. Maybe they're just trying to whittle down our clock, but I think they're now below us in clock time, so we managed to play quickly over the last few turns. And that's got us in a good position. Maybe they've forgotten that our tabernacle, uh, that our Maze of Ith is a Thespian stage. Make 2020. Okay, sure, so we got the game. Slightly ahead on clock, but not by much. So, Source Plow Shares, we're going to want in this matchup, I would say. The Dress Down is okay as well. The Endurances are going to look good here, much more so than the Dress Down. So, what's going to look bad here? Stifle is okay. Uh, we, we can also run Fluster Storm to counter our opponent's um, natural order. That's a thing that we have available to us. Now, I'm not sure how good these Mox Diamonds are going to be in this matchup, truth be told. I also don't think the Caracas is that useful here. So we can trim a Caracas for a Plow. That's pretty straightforward. The Maze of Iths are going to be good to stop all the aggro-y stuff. We saw how good the Tabernacle was. Wastelands, yep, yeah, Yamamaya. Hall of Heroes generosity to keep rebuying stuff. This is all good. Paducah Bog is fine. Besaidu can hit Cradle. Blast Yep, yeah, so none of our land's coming out. So maybe we're boarding out these Mox Diamonds. And the question is, do we want the Flusterstorm just to counter Natural Order? It can counter things like Snuff Out as well. I think they're going to be doing some shenanigans with their Endurances and with their Snuff Outs and things like that on our guys. So Flusterstorm definitely has some text there. The question is, do we want to have anything else? Do we want to cut any other cards just to counter Natural Order? Basically, Natural Order is the only card I'm really scared of in our opponent's deck for the most part. These Shark Typhoons are okay, but this isn't really the matchup for Shark Typhoon, I don't think. Maybe it's okay just to have Spell Pierces for those cards. 
this does give us a way of deploying a threat. But I guess the endurance kind of does the same thing, but better. I think I'd rather just not lose to natural order. So I'm going to play these cluster storms. I find these Newton Elve decks to be not my cup of tea. I don't think we can keep this. Even though it does have a combo, I think we do need to have mana that we can do something with. My deck obviously didn't hear me. Um, so this kind of does the same thing as last game until we draw into mana sources. So I don't think this is too shabby. Um, we have to put one of these back. So it's either the plow or the depths here. It's probably the depths. We'll get round to winning later. We're just going to be a miserable little so-and-so instead. Obviously, we don't have a way of casting the plow yet, but we'll get there. We have loads of plays in our opening hand here. Okay, what's this going to be? Okay, so they've got a basic. So we can't waste land them off of that. So we're probably playing out Maze of Ith for our first land. Oh, no, maybe not. They're going for Dryad Arbor. I will kill that. Okay, so we drew the Dark Depths anyway. Goodbye, Dryad Arbor. We've got two more ways of hitting their non-basics as well. So these decks tend to run two Dryad Arbors. They're a lot more Dryad Arbor focused than the um, sort of standard elves that don't really have that sort of stuff in. Okay, so there's the other one. And then they've got Findhorn Elves. So we're going to waste down their Dried Arbor here. Where are we? I think we do waste down it. We've got, we've got one more waste land for the Cradle, which is what we're going to save it for. We're just trying to reduce our opponent's resources down before we can make inroads. Hopefully our opponent will miss a land drop soon. We need to go to their main phase. There we go. And Reclaimer, sure. Okay, so they've got a Cradle, so we can hit the Cradle with our Wasteland. But we kind of need to be doing something here, really. We have to hit the Cradle, it's too powerful to leave in play. That's why we kept one of the Wastelands. Maybe we'll get an untapped mana source at some point. Very funny. Um, sure, so we are falling behind a little bit. But we have a lot of draws that get us back into this game. So our opponent can go and get a Cradle, but it'll be tapped this turn. Then we're probably ploughing the Fiend Arzan, if that happens. Grist, this is a good one. This can let them go wide, and it gives them loads of food for the Fiend Eyes. I think we're going to lose this game. Like, our hand needed to draw certain things to be good, and we haven't really gotten there yet. Now, it's not to say that we can't win this game, but we are quite far behind. Let's see if we can get a green sauce. Savannah would be nice. A blast zone. That's not really the one, is it? Uh, so we have two choices here. We can either play the Sajiri step, so that we can plow next turn. We're taking four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So I think we have to play Maze of Iths out here. And I think we're just going to lose because we're not going to have the mana here. Which was definitely a risk with the hand I kept. So I might be able to take our opponent's legs out underneath them. It hasn't quite worked that way. So we take three, four, five damage this turn. So three turn clock. Yep. Keep making some guys. Then when guys start dying, they might be able to drain us out. This is just natural order. That's just lethal. Sure, we can see this game. So that's the, the scary card in our opponent's deck. So, do I have any thoughts? Uh, maybe I should keep bare hands. That's a pretty good thought, isn't it? Uh, there is definitely an argument for playing Chalice of the Void for one to stop some of their elves because they run a selection of one drops. But I, I honestly don't think it's worth it. I think just doing what we do is good enough and we just need to play a little smarter and keep bare hands. This hand doesn't lose to natural order and it can start gobbling up some of their guys. So I think we can keep this one. I think we lead out on the Misty Rainforest. This is kind of like a, a fairish hand, but it stops the one thing that I'm really scared that our opponent can do. Now they can play a Fiend Artisan and then natural order off a of Fiend Artisan. Well, not natural order, but they can tap a load of mana and go and find their big guy that way. So we could flush on this, but again, like I said, the thing I'm scared of is the natural order. So I'm going to just play lands out until we can start casting these endurances. Crop rotation. Does that change anything? I don't think so. Not right now. We can sit on that and then tabernacle our opponent later. We want them to go wide and then snag them with the tabernacle, ideally. So they just play out a load of one drops this turn. That's going to be a great time for us to go and get a tabernacle. And because it uses the mana and turns it into a... I think it doesn't make matter. It doesn't matter if we do it on their turn or our turn. I wish reclaim it. Sure. A cradle. Less than ideal. A fiend artisan. Sure. So we're probably going to have to get the um, tabernacle this turn anyway. Let's see what we find. 
plow. Plow is good. Do you think we have to just go and get the tabernacle now? And we probably want to sacrifice the the rivulet rather than our forest here because we want to be able to cast an endurance soon. It looks a bit ugly mana wise though, but let's go and get tabernacle. This is one of the times where I wouldn't mind a tundra in my deck. So what we can do is after our opponents paid for stuff, we can then kill one of their guys with the plow. But we're going to need blue mana for our Flusterstorm is the issue. So we're kind of in a bit of a bind. Crater was pretty good against the old tabernacle strategies. But at least it's forcing their Crater to do that instead of just making them enough mana to kill us. This means they shouldn't be able to use the Fiend Artisan to get Crater Hoof. So our Flusterstorm can cover the um, natural order. Bit of a grindy one this. Once upon a time. Sure. What are you going to have us? Let's pop out the revealed section, see what they show us. So we can play the Maze of Earth next turn and sit on it a little bit. Just a Misty Rainforest. Sure, that makes sense. Land is something there, pretty happy about that. Okay, they're doing all this in their draw step because they keep forgetting to go to their main phase to do stuff. And we've seen this, so we can close this panel. All right, so we're going to take two this turn. I suspect these guys are... They didn't come in. That's interesting. What are they playing out here? There's just another Dried Arbor. They're doing it now to save on clock, perhaps. So I can use their 6 through my turn. Nope, it's a forest, so they've got a follow-up play here. So they're sacking... A sacking Reclaimer for a Dried Arbor. Interesting. Okay. So this is the play that gives them more mana on the next turn. Okay, so this... This is a good draw for us, this uh, island. Because we can play this, and this can go and get us our... Savannah. So we can cast Endurance, or we can cast Flusterstorm Plow. Um, so how much mana are they going to have next turn? So this pays for this, that pays for that. Then they have three off of the Cradle. I think we should just be plowing our opponent's Fiend Knights down here. Because they can tap this, this, and this, and then we'll actually have Cradle available on their turn to go into their turn with more mana. Which is a bit of a worrying prospect when they can then tutor for a three or a four drop on their turn. And I'm not really sure what that 3 or 4 drop could be, so I'd rather play a bit cautiously. Natural order. So we all count on this. This is what we held up the Flusterstorms for. There's going to be two copies of this. And they have no mana floating. So they can't stop the natural order from getting counted here. Unless they have a spirit guide, which I have seen a few people play around with in New Nails. I don't think it's correct, though. Okay, so that's that dealt with. So now they're going to play... Are they going to attack us? Attack us for one. Sure. So maybe we can nab them with a with an Endurance next turn. A Thespian stage. Okay, we'll play this out so they don't have to see the Maze of Ith coming. It just dramatically reduces the power of their Cradle as well. So hopefully we can nab this Dried Arbor in combat. And that will be more or less game then. Hopefully. More or less doing a lot of work there, but... A collector Roof. Sure, we've boarded out our artifacts. Come on, in the red zone you come. Green. Green. This. Let's make a little lad. Uh, do we want to shuffle in a natural order into our opponent's deck? I don't think I do, to be honest. Uh, no targets. A snuff out, you say? Sure. That's fine. So our endurance trigger doesn't do anything, but we have we can play the same play next turn. All right, this is a pretty slow and grindy one. Not the sort of magic I particularly enjoy, necessarily. Because I don't really get a lot of choices in my turns. It's not like I'm cantripping and trying to find things and sculpt. I'm just kind of, what do I draw? Let's see what happens. Let's see what our opponent draws. We're kind of just throwing our hands at each other pretty much. Okay. It makes sense for them to not use the Cradle here, just in case they can deploy another creature. So maybe we can catch them out with Endurance. Maybe they won't fall for it this time. We'll see. We're only a Dark Depths away from a 2020 as well. Another Misty Rainforest. That's good for us. Our opponent bricking on land. They're both coming in. We'll cast this. So green, green, and this one. Let's have another one. The one reason I want to shuffle this in is in case our opponent gets a um, Fiend Artisan. Okay, we've got another snuff out from our opponent here. Sure. We'll tap this guy. And then we just pass through the turn. Our opponent doesn't have a quick clock, but they do have a clock. An Ice Fang. Okay, that's a pretty good hit. Uh, we'll play this one out. And we've, uh, we will Ice Fang our opponent here. It will have Death Touch as well if we go and get the basic forest off of this. So we can trade it with the 2-2 two, two here. 
Now there was an option to cast this in our main phase, so we could see if we draw like a life from a loam or something. Maybe that's better. Our opponent's doing their draw step. Okay, good. They've gone to main. Let's cast this. Can I have a card, please? A wasteland. Oh, I like this one. So let's crack this. We're gonna get ourselves the snow cold forest. And we're gonna blocks. Yes, we block. I honestly don't know which of these is better to block. I think it probably is the collector roof just for damage's sake. But the dried armor is just a better card at the moment in this game. Okay, we have this wasteland. This fluster storm's probably not doing the business for us. I don't think we actually wasteland yet. Because our opponent could cast natural order off these lands anyway. So we might as well save this for a uh, Caracas if our opponent is doing Caracasy things. Now we can always use this to kill the Dried Arbor. Maybe that's what we should be doing here. Elvish Reclaimer. Sure. Come on, deck. Give us Life from the Lame or something. Exploration. That's not really where we want to be, is it? But we'll play it out now in case we get the Exploration, the Life from the Lame coming up. And we have a choice of whether or not we sacrifice. We. Waste on that dried arbor or we hold it for the Caracas. If they had natural order, they would have cast it already. Because they'd go and get progenitors. So they're paying for both their guys. Sure, that makes sense. We don't have a glacial chasm or something to defend against the progenitors. But we can take one hit from a progenitors. So that's what we're playing against right now. I think they're meant to go to combat there. Sure, we'll maze their reclaimer. We'll take one here. Okay, so we found a win condition. Now, I don't think our opponent has a way to interact with this outside of Endurance and the um, Caracas. So if they go and get Caracas now, we can blow it up. We don't need to blow it up now. Anyway. We can blow it up just before we make our uh, Dark Depth Tanks. So we blow it up at the end of their main phase, I think. So this is why we held the, the Wasteland, and it looks like we might be paid off for it. We're playing a white creature. Tapping the Caracas here is very suspect to me. There are... They've shown me that I should be wastelanding their white source here. Because they're doing all this in their draw step thinking it's their main phase. They've given me extra information. So they might have that Arcan of Valor's Reach, I think it's called. So this just stops them from having it because they were trying to cast it in their main phase. In their draw step rather than their main phase. Now they could play a Caracas from hand, but I suspect they only have the one as part of the Reclaimer package. Maybe we should have just wastelanded it in their upkeep anyway. That's an interesting learning, learning tool there. Okay, so we've got in the second main phase. We've got a lot covered. Well, we got something covered with the Fluster Storm anyway. They can't pay if they're playing five drops. Is it a Green Suns? This looks like a Green Suns. A natural order. Okay, we will just counter this. It's why we bought in the Fluster Storms to counter a natural order. And what did we do? We counter two natural orders with Fluster Storms. Okay, so the power of Cyborg cards compelled me there. The, the Fluster Storms were excellent. They did exactly what I wanted them to do, and we just played this sort of grindy tabernacle game where this is kind of like a kind of like a waste down for their cradle because their cradle is basically always tapped, but sometimes they can jimmy around it if they've got mana dorks like this because they're creatures and mana sources. So they can kind of pay for stuff and then have more with their cradle at the right time sort of thing. But yeah, pretty happy about that one. A bit grindy, but there we are. So we are 3-0 going into round four. We're on the play for round four. And this is our opening hand. This Mr. Rainforest will have to get a blue source for our Shark Typhoons, which means the Savannah is got, going to be what's casting our Reclaimer. We'll keep this though. We have a one drop. We have some other stuff to do. We don't have any combo pieces, but we're not a dedicated combo deck. So let's play our Reclaimer. So we're just going to look like regular green-white depths right now, or Naya depths. That's probably what our opponent's going to immediately put us on. And there's a Saga. So opponent's out on turn one means Painter, most likely. Fury. Our opponent is playing a painter deck. What do they pitch? Another fury. All right. So have another one then. So we have options here of whether we play the Sejiri step now, just to give ourselves to make use of the fact that it comes into tapped, and then next turn we can play this out, or we can play out the Mysterian Forest and represent something. I think we just play out the step here. So this is going to get grindstone soon. So they probably have an ancient tune to follow this up with, so they can just make constructs. Okay, they're just going for the combo here. So we're incentivized to get a Wasteland and take out the Ezra Saga here. Otherwise, we will... Well, we, we can't even do that with the Reclaimer, actually, can we? We're a turn behind doing that. Um, do we have anything we can get? We can get a Tabernacle, which forces them to spend mana this turn, which I don't hate. So I think we probably have to do that. We'd rather not show them the blue if we can avoid it. I think we are sacrificing this 
We get tabernacle because that costs the mana down. Otherwise, they just need one mana to kill us. Now, it does mean we're in a similar position next turn. This is just buying us one turn. Um, just checking there isn't anything else we can work with here. The Besejude won't work because it needs to be from our hand. We can't put a wasteland into play untapped because this puts them tapped, so it has to be the tabernacle. I think that's the best play we have here. I think we lose game one, and then we try and shore up post-board with a bunch of other things. So we got Hydroblasts, which they won't see coming if we don't reveal our blue sources, and we've also got um, Force of Vigors, which is going to be good against our opponent. Now, if our opponent's got Soul Land, we still lose, but we've at least bought ourselves the possibility that we don't lose. And I'll take that. Right, so it's our opponent's turn here. They're probably going to use their Saga to pay. Not using their Mountain to pay. No, Saga's the better one to pay with that. Not that it necessarily matters too much, but if they have a Soul Land, it doesn't. So kind of hoping they would use a Saga for this. Sure. So this goes gets Grindstone. Yep, you got Soul Land. Yep, we're done. Boop. Sure. So we made the only play that was available to us there. Bit awkward, but there we are. So, Force of Vigors blows up a load of their things. Endurance shuffles our library back in. Plow kills Painter. Hydroblast blows up all their red stuff. Dress Down certainly has text, but it has to... Uh, there is a layering issue there. Um, it stops a bunch of their things, actually, so I think this is pretty good. So, what's bad? Stifle is okay. Crop Rotation is okay. The Mox Diamonds are... Some of them let us accelerate out a little bit. I don't think this is a Shark Typhoon game. The Ice Fangs are okay, but not spectacular. I think the Force of Vigor is going to do the same thing as Ice Fangs, but better for the most part. We're not drawing a card off them, which is true. But I think these are just going to be an upgrade because they can actually save our life. Uh, how many green cards? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19. 19 is enough. Um, we're not going to need our Caracas in this game. That's a free one we can board out. The Maze of Ith we can need because our opponent can go into quite a solid beatdown strategy. Uh, same with the Tabernacle, it's fine here. So we're looking at cutting four cards. Um, kind of looking at these Mox Diamonds. Like, mm, Stifle can stop one activation, but it can also stop a Kiki Jiki trigger. It can stop a Fury trigger. It can stop a... Welder activation, so I think it is worth having the one in there. I don't want to take any green cards because I want to have the pips for endurance in case we need to buy a turn that way. So I don't think we're left with any choices other than these, to be honest. Which is weird, but okay, I guess. Mm, okay, so we've got a turn 2 2020, so I think we can keep this. Now, sometimes you lose to Painter, even if you make a turn 2 2020. Let it be known. Our opponent can... Um, Cast Blood Moon, so I think we use this to go. We use the Misty Rainforest to get a basic forest. Okay, so we're going to get ourselves a basic. We cast our exploration. And then we play out a Savannah, I think, because that gives us the ability to crop rotation if required. And then next turn, we can play out stage and like Maze of Ith or whatever. Uh, we probably have to crop rotate. Oh, have I made a mistake there? Because this doesn't tap for mana, that can actually set us back a turn. Yeah, I made a mistake there. I kept up the crop rotation, but not got the mana to make a 20-20 in this turn, unless we draw an untapped mana source. Right, never punish, right? So we'll play out this, and we'll play out this, and we'll say go. Is a turn 2 20, 20 good enough? What is this going to be? Megas of the Moon. I have a response to Megas of the Moon, unsurprisingly. Tap this. So we'll tap this for green. Cast this, sacrificing this. Go and get Dark Depths. Then this can target this. Play this, and we have this. Let's make a 2020. Keep this one. This looks like it's going to be good enough. Yes, it's good enough. Sure, let's go to the next game. So, again, they have the Megs of the Moon, which maybe means we need Mox Diamonds on the play. On the draw, sorry. Because we need to be able to cast our spells. So these look much better to me on the draw than on the play which means we're probably looking at cutting what are we going to cut i don't know if this is going to be a field of the dead type game i don't think we have time for that sort of shenanigans so maybe we can trim this field of the dead out here we haven't used it at all 
and it's leaked so far, so I don't mind taking that one out. Uh, Wastelands are very good here. Sajiri Step is... Is Sajiri Step good? No, because anything that they make is a Thopter. Uh, they can Pyro... They can't even Pyroblast, actually, can they? No, I think we can take the Sajiri Step out there. So that brick gives us these Mox Diamonds, and then we're probably looking at cutting... Stifle. Seems so weird to me. Just this one Stifle. One Stifle, one Dress Down. I think we want the Crop Rot so we can go quick. Blast Zone is pretty useful. The Rivulet. Maybe we can trim on a Maze. We don't want to trim too many lands here. We've still got 30 lands though, so our Mox Diamonds are going to be fine here. Um, we don't want to cut green cards. I guess we probably just have to cut another land here. We've already cut the Sark Typhoon, so I guess we cut the Hall of Heliod. That makes sense. So we've got 29 lands. That's plenty for a Mox Diamond deck. So as long as they don't Blood Moon us on turn one, we're okay. So we can keep this. We have protection against getting ground once, and then we can besage you it as well. So we might end up in a weird game where our opponent makes some Megas of the Moon, and then we Hydro Blast away their little guy. Our opponent is mulligan to five, so the chance of them making Blood Moon on turn one is relatively low. Okay, this is a good draw for us. I think we Savannah to play out our Exploration, and then we can play out our Misty Rainforest. I don't think our opponents... Oh, they've seen the Rivulet, haven't they? That's the only blue they've really seen. So we have a Hydro Blast. If our opponent plays Megas of the, uh, plays Blood Moon, we can go get an Island. Then we can just play our Dark Depths and then kill their Megas. Breyer's Apprentice. So this is just going to give them a whole bunch of card advantage. Considering they've mulliganed, I think I'm inclined to go and get the... Um, to Hydro Blast this. Um, or are we supposed to hit the Welder? That's the question there, isn't it? Um, it's one of these two, right? If we hit this one, they can't block. And they need another artifact to put this in. Um, I think we're supposed to hit this and slow them down. Because they're going to need other artifacts if they want to do anything. So this goblin's coming for one. Let me untap. And we make sweet, sweet 2020s. So we can float green and besage you something if we need to. But we can just make a 2020 in response to a Blood Moon. So we're not dead to Blood Moon here. I'm not really sure what our opponent can have here. Uh, Ensnaring Bridge. Uh, we beat Ensnaring Bridge because we untap and besage it. Fable of the Mirror Breaker. Yeah. That doesn't do it. I think we are going to have this one. Okay, so they've got a Great Furnace there. Interesting. So we still have this if they make the Brave Apprentice here. A Grindstone. Sure. So this is something that they can just sacrifice to the Brave Apprentice. But we can blow up the Thopter because this itself doesn't fly. So I think we have our opponent here. So this targets this, as you've seen many times throughout Depth December. Making a 2020. One of my favorite ways of playing Magic. One of my other favorite ways of playing Magic is Pain of Servant people, to be fair. So, uh, so if I... Oh, this is the end step, so I don't have a choice here. They just have to get the Brave Apprentice straight up. Sure. Uh, we can plow it, but that gives them resources that we don't want them to have. Uh, I think we play out the Yavimaya first, just in case. We hit this for green and... Oh, it's just green, isn't it? Because I've got Legend in play. So they have one red mana. I don't think they can do anything with this for one red mana. Cool, so we got the match. So we are 4-0 and with this deck. Uh, some of the numbers on it look pretty weird. But the combination of like things like Hydro Blast and... Even Shark Typhoon and things like that, because the Shark Typhoon lets us beat through a Teferi and things like that. Um, this deck feels really good. We've got one more round, and it's the trophy round. So let's jump into round five. So this is our opening hand for the final round. Um, we can play out a load of lands. We didn't really go anywhere. We kind of need one of our business spells. So I think we have to mulligan. That certainly clarifies as business. We have the Shark Typhoon loop, which we haven't seen yet. So I'm going to be quite... I kind of want to keep this one for this. Um, so what we, we still need to keep our blue source and we need to keep our white source for this. We want to keep this. We want to make a turn one reclaimer. So we're getting rid of either Besaidu or Yavimaya. Yavimaya is probably going to be better for us in the long run. And if we're playing it as a land anyway, I think it's a Besaidu that has to go. Process of elimination there. We also won the die roll again. So we're, we're certainly getting well with the die rolls here. So let's have ourselves an Elvish reclaimer. Our opponent's called Funky Brewster, so I hope they're on a Funky Brew. Because if they take the trophy off me, I'd at least like them to be playing something cool. 
Lion's Eye Diamond. Okay, so this is going to be a pretty horrible matchup for us, I suspect. Two Lion's Eye Diamonds. This is Epic Gamble, Elvish Spirit Guide, Tinderwall. Okay, we're just going full Belcher here. Oakley Doakley. Echo. So we're getting a spin on. So they might not have it here. Um, so if they try and two-step it by playing the Char Belcher and then cracking it, but why would they do that when they have Lion's Eye Diamond, I guess, is the question. So we're probably getting Belcher this turn. A difficult matchup for the poor little lands player over here. We're going to be going deep in the tank to try and find some useful cards in this matchup for sure. We do get the advantage that our opponent hasn't seen any blue stuff so far. That's what we're putting under here. Burning Wish, sure. A Chromox. What's going under this one? Another Burning Wish. Yikes. Is this just a Belcher? Empty the Warrens. Okay, we beat Empty the Warrens because we just go and get our Tabernacle. All right, so we might be getting, we might be getting lucky here and beating Belcher in game one. Got to believe in the heart of the cards, right? And a gamble. Okay, so they're going again, I think, with an Echo of Eons. So what do we have here? We have a Stifle. That can Stifle a Storm Trigger. Land Grant, sure. Okay, let's see what they've revealed to us. Burning Wish. Um, yeah, they think they should have enough mana here, right? Simon Spirit Guide. Uh, when well, that's not right flame. Oh, Simon Spirit Guide, right flame. Okay, we're just gambling again, aren't we? Oh yeah, except they're one. I played the tiger. Up. So they're one short of the um, casting the season song into Burning Wish. Who might not be dead? So discard a Burning Wish. Play the lines that diamond. The other Spirit Guide is gone. The Simon Spirit Guide is gone. We're just getting another echo. Sure. Simon Spirit Guide, Exiled. Just make more Goblins. Please just make more Goblins. Right Flame. Right Flame. We could be getting Grape Shot here. Good old fashioned Grape Shot. Oh, I was so hopeful when they cast the Empty the Warriors and I thought that was it. Sure, Seething Song, they got more mana. Tinder Wall. That can help pay for two Goblins for a turn. Burning Wish with mana floating. So if they've got the Grape Shot, then we're dead. There's the Grape Shot. Wowzers, Trousers. Yeah, that'll do us. So this matchup is going to be really hard. We have these Chalice of the Voids. That's something. Uh, Hydroblast has text, so I'll take it. Flutterstorm has good text. Dress down, not so much. The Endurance can sometimes mess with their lines. So I don't hate the Endurances, and I don't hate the Force of Vigors. We don't need Shark Typhoons. We don't need Ice Fangs. We don't need Plows. We probably need our way of speeding up. We're not going to need Caracas in this matchup. We're not going to need Maze of Is in this matchup. We'll keep our Tabernacle for the little guys. Take out our Hall of Helios Generosity. Is this an, an okay composition? The Sajiri step, probably not necessary either. So we probably remove that and maybe get another green card to pitch to Endurances if needs be. I don't hate that. The Dress Down can stop a tinder wall, but we're never looking to have the mana to do that. I don't I just don't think that's realistic. Jukebog sometimes has text. Feel the dead is gonna be a slow one here. I don't think that's something we can rely on here. So maybe the dress down over the or just another ice fang. This is another green card. That's sort of the level we're at here. Alright, well something like this. If we win this matchup it'll be a, a Christmas miracle. Uh, the Hydro Blast and the Crop Rotation. These are both things that might come in handy. Unfortunately, we have a Bajuka Bog in hand, which is really not what we want it. Uh, do we mulligan this that has Hydro Blast on one with Crop Rotation? I think we have to keep this. We can't Crop Rotation for Bajuka Bog, but it's not always useful if they sequence correctly anyway. Hydro Blast hitting Gamble, though, that's going to be big news. Now, it can certainly go wrong in a way that they don't have Gamble. Now this stops our opponent from winning the game immediately, potentially. But what does it do in terms of us being able to win the game ourselves? That is the real question to ask. Okay, let's see what we got here. Right of Flame, Tinderball, Charbelcher, LED. So the only thing we can hit with our Hydro Blast here is the Right of Flame. Okay. So our opponent is going to go one, two, three, four, and cast the Charbelcher next turn. So we want to keep our Force of Vigor to blow up the Char Belcher, if it somehow gets into play. 
They will just spin the wheel on Echo next turn, though. Uh, so what does that mean for our mana base here? I guess we want to have the most flexible land option in play, which is the Misty Rainforest. We can go and get Tabernacle now, but that means we can't pitch to Force of Vigor. So I think we're supposed to just hold on this Hydro Blast, fire it off on the right of flame, and force our opponent to Char Belcher. Now they should play out their LEDs first, so that I don't have an option of blowing up their Char Belcher. But I do have to hit the Rite of Flame before they play the LEDs out. So what they should do here is start off on the Rite of Flame. Okay, so they've messed this up. Now, they will just be casting Echo of Eons here. Because that's what Lion's Eye Diamonds do to people. So they're probably going to crack both of these LEDs for the Echo. So they can have the most amount of mana floating. So there's no point in us trying to snap it with a... Um, we don't really have any way of interacting with this, so it just has to go, unfortunately. We can hit the Lion's Eye Diamond now with our Force of Vigor. What does that actually achieve for us? It will, for it will make it harder for them to do another Echo Line if we Force of Vigor this. So it makes the Echo Line harder. Um, and it also means they can't just play a thing and pass. So I think we are supposed to hit this. They're just going to float the mana from it. But it means that Echo is going to be harder to put in the graveyard. Uh, to, yeah. Like the Force of Vigor is getting shuffled in anyway. So all we're really doing is taking one crop rotation out of our deck. I don't know if we want to thin what we want to find with this. Oh, we have a Stifle. Stifle is very good here. So we don't know our opponent's hand now. Stifle is good. Endurance is playable. Wasteland on the next turn is okay too. Next opportunity we get, we're cracking this Misty Rainforest. And we're going to get a Tropical Island. And then they're going to have their Tinder Wall. Now, if they just play a Char Belcher, we can stifle the first activation, but they can just reactivate the next turn. So we're going to need something. Burning Wish, sure. So we're hoping to stifle the Storm Trigger with this random Singleton Stifle that made very little sense in the deck tech. This can wing us a game. Goblin War Strike. I see. Empty the Warrens. No Storm Trigger for you. I'm, I'm doing my damnedest over here. I'm just... Uh, Poor innocent maker of 2020s. So we can wasteland their tiger this turn, or we can play the endurance. I think we probably wasteland them because mana is the scariest thing for them to have. Gamble. Let's see what they discard. A burning wish. That's probably not one they wanted to discard. They probably wanted to discard the war strike, ideally. A lion's eye diamond. Are we spinning again? We're not spinning again. Interesting. Okay. This is a pretty good draw for us again. So we go green for exploration. We play out this wasteland. Fire off on this. And then we play out this forest. We don't cast a life from the loam. Because if our opponent casts an Echo of Eons and starts going off again, we want to at least have the Stifle in our deck and, something, and be something that we can cast. And we can afford to take two damage from the goblins. Unfortunately, for game three, our opponent is just going to be on the play, so we kind of have to hope they mulligan into oblivion. Uh, this blast zone doesn't really do much for us. Um, so what we're doing here. Like, Wasteland doesn't do anything either here. So I think we're just playing out. We can't remove the counters from blast zone either, so I think we're just playing out some lands here. And then we're going to try and catch our opponent's goblins in combat. And then maybe we can start dredging life from alone. And turn after that. Do I want to shuffle these into my opponent's deck? I don't think so. No, we don't want to shuffle the Tiger in because our opponent's a land grant deck. Yeah, okay. So we're not shuffling in because we don't want to make land grant a card that does anything in our opponent's deck. Sure. We block here. Then we can start pushing damage. Now it only takes one echo for our opponent to start doing stuff, so we need to find like a... Okay, so this stops our opponent being able to do stuff with an echo. So I like that. I think we loam first, and then we're playing out uh, Misty Rainforest, and probably Blast Zone here. Who attacks? I think we are just hard casting this right now, just so our opponent can't echo very easily next turn. Uh, is that right? Mm, I don't know. Maybe it's greedy to hold on to it for another turn. I'm trying to get an additional hit off of it. Is that greedy? So we're probably dredging this life from the loam. I'm going to pop out our graveyard from this point onwards. Uh, we didn't hear anything exciting in there, unfortunately. 
Uh, so I think we crack this, start sending our deck slightly more. So we're going to get this snow covered. And then this will do. And then we'll play our wasteland and we'll play out one of these misties because only one of them fetches things now. We're now in the choice again of whether or not we force a vigor our opponent's lines our diamond. And I think we should. Green, green, colorless, colorless. So our opponent might be on chump block duty here. Our opponent needs two cards to cast to make an echo now. Cracks in the upkeep. Go and get the last land out of our deck. And we'll dredge this life from the loam. Target these two lands. Our Thespian stage, and we're not going to play out our Mysterium Forest because we know it doesn't do anything. What we can do though is we can copy the Blast Zone with our Thespian stage so we can actually blow up zero drops, which is a really heads up play that hopefully our opponent will play into. I suspect they won't, but it's certainly possible. It's another way that we can blow up all of their goblins if they make more. I don't know how many empty the Warrens are going to have in their sideboard. So now we have a Blast Zone with no counters on. So it's actually the same trick as the Dark Depths where it copies it without counters. Okay, so now we found the Dark Depths. And the Besage is pretty nice too. Uh, so this Wasteland isn't doing anything. Let's get these. Play this out. Might as well keep attacking in case something goes wrong. So we've got a lot of stuff covered. But our, if our opponent just chains spells correctly without passing priority and kills us, then we die. So no Glacial Chasm to fog a Grape Shot, unfortunately. A weirdly long game with Char Vulture. Sure. So now we go to the next game. If our opponent turns ones us, we have literally no recourse to that. The only pos possible thing we could do is something with an Endurance or a Force of Vigor. So, because of that, I would like the extra Ice Fang, just so we have more green things to pitch. Now, in order to do that, we're going to have to cut a card from our deck. And I think the only card we can realistically cut from our deck to do that is a land. Now, we only want one Wasteland in these games. But we do want to find a wasteland. Interesting. We don't want to cut any green sources or blue sources. So I think the only card we can cut here is a single wasteland. Just so that we have the slightly higher chance of being able to pitch cast one of our pitch cast spells. Now our opponent can pretty much just have their way with us this turn. We have pitch cast spells. They're not the exciting ones. They don't impact our opponent's mana. I think we should mulligan. This hand is very strong but it doesn't really beat turn one Belcher. Let's see if our opponent mulligans again. So this hand is turn one Reclaimer. Uh, they've mulligan to five, so I think we'll mulligan as well. This is the best hand we've seen so far. It's still not very good. We have no turn zero interaction. We just have this Hydro Blast. Our opponent is mulligan to four. So our opponent is kind of trying to get an Echo hand going by the looks of it. I think we keep this. So we have to get rid of two of these cards. Exploration, not looking so hot right now. We need to keep the lands so that we can make our Mox Diamond. So probably keeping this, so it's probably this goes and maybe the crop rotation here. Crop rotation does give us graveyard hate and access to Tabernacle against um, the uh, goblins. So I think we probably have to get rid of the life from the loam here. So we've got Tabernacle for the, zomb for the goblins. We have Hydro Blast. If we get to untap, we can do something with Hydro Blast. So we've, we've kind of got one of their wins covered. Although it might be difficult for them to make goblins on turn one. But they're probably mulligan to an Echo Hand. Petal Petal LED Echo. That's a damn fine four card hand if that's what they've got. Okay, yeah, so they have got that. Gamble is effectively the same. Sure, so our opponent's hand is good, but they are... Just running into a new seven. And as we saw, they sometimes discard seven card hands in for mulliganing purposes. So we might be okay here. They will have mana floating is the only issue. So our hand doesn't do anything here. If we untap, then I think we can win with this hand. Because we hide we have Chalice and Hydroblast. Uh, Chalice, Hydroblast, or Flusterstorm. So we really need our opponent to pass a turn. Come on. This doesn't look like our opponent passing a turn. If they go for if they go for goblins, we've got that covered. If they go for just making like twelve goblins or whatever, or fourteen goblins, we've got that covered. Or oh, is it really tense? It's all in our opponents. Oh, that's a pretty good one. That can pay for some goblins, but it can also enable another echo turn. So if they've got a gamble, a burning wish. So they put empty the warrens. Okay, this looks like an ad nauseum line because they've added three black tendrils. Oh no, they've just got lethal tendrils, haven't they? Shh. 
sure. Yeah, that's us done, I'm afraid. The trophy is done. So, yeah, Belcher is pretty much the worst matchup we have. So, we got the 4 1. Let's have a look at the deck. So, I'll be honest, this deck outperformed. I didn't really understand the numbers on some of these things, but it worked out. Now, I, what I will say is these Fluster Storms should be Mind Break Traps. I think the thing that makes sense, like, the, our deck here is very weak to uh, Storm. Now, if we play the Mind Break Traps instead of the Fluster Storm, we're losing against... So, the game where we beat Elves with Fluster Storm, we lose to. And also, Doomsday we could lose to without the Fluster Storms. So, maybe it is right, actually, to have the Fluster Storms thinking about it. Because that's the only other slot you have here. Although, what you could... No, I don't think you can do that, actually, no. But, um, I think... I don't even know if this extra plow is necessary. I think three plows might be enough. So, maybe we could fit something else in there. But... Having no turn zero interaction for Storm decks is pretty bad. Like, if we, we have, even if we win the die roll in game one, we still don't do anything. We have to hope that our opponent goes for Goblins rather than Belcher or Storm. So, we feel pretty weak to that matchup. However, as I like to say, you can't beat everything. So, it's probably worth just taking the hit and saying, well, if I run into the Storm on the league, then I'm going to lose, and that's fine. And honestly, with a deck like this, yeah, I would take that play, actually. I think that is correct. You could even go further and say, like, remove chalices. But I think the chalices are so useful against the eight-cast matchup where we just completely annihilate our opponent because we played a chalice. And they pretty much just scooped to that after we blew up all their lands. So I think this configuration is designed to lose to Storm. And I don't think putting my rate traps in will actually let you beat Storm particularly often so i think actually now i've had a quick thought you don't want my break trap you don't want these fluster storms and this configuration the cyborg seems fine the one suspect card to me is definitely the plow uh the dress down is also a little bit odd um like we boarded it in but a singleton dress down in our deck like i understand why it's there because what you do is you mill through your deck with your life from the loam and then you use Hall of Helios Generosity to put the dress down on top of your library and draw it. That's kind of why it's in there. That's why it's only a singleton, because you can kind of see more of your deck and find it. However, I'm not sure if it's worth the slot, necessarily. Uh, it's good against Doomsday, I suppose. And it's good against 8 Carty type stuff and, and um, just Urza Saga decks in general. So, I guess it does feel like if you want to play with the slots in these decks... It's probably the plow and the dress down and what you can look to sort of tweak. Now, quite how you want to tweak those, I don't know. I've only just played one league with this deck, so sure. Let's talk about the main deck. So all of our business lands at some point, apart from the Hall of Helios Generosity, we actually used, right? Uh, oh, the Field of the Dead, actually. The Field of the Dead was one we didn't use, but that's because we didn't really play against any slow sort of controlling matchups. Now, if you've been watching my channel you will have noticed that I have said that at the end of every single league I've played. So if you're playing leagues, I don't think you want Field of the Dead. I just think it's really slow, and the meta at the moment is so hostile to that sort of like slow, grindy control deck that you probably don't want to play it. However, if you're playing in like a higher quality tournament, you know, like a, like a, a paper tournament with good prizes, or like one of the higher legacy ones on online like a challenge or something like that then you probably do want it because control decks are more likely in those things than leagues because leagues tend to gravitate towards faster decks generally anyway but um even though i think the format isn't great for control decks right now you'll still get some good control players who've you know played the games drilled the numbers and actually worked out how to approach all the matchups and can kind of get there a little bit so i think the Field of the Dead is one of the cards that you would probably board out for. You probably don't want for leagues, but you do want for the higher competitive tournaments. Now, as the rest is deck, again, I come back to the Stifle. So, it looked pretty good in that Char Voucher matchup. It won us a round. It won us a game. However, we're going to be losing most of our games against Char Voucher. Just full stop. I don't think it's worth having a Stifle to beat that sort of matchup. Now, obviously, it has other utility. 
But the thing is, it's a singleton stifle that you're going to struggle to find and do things with. I think it would be better if this stifle was another Shark Typhoon or even the dress down from the sideboard back in the main. I think you would get a bit more joy on that. Like, yes, you can stifle a fetch land. You can stifle an opponent trying to make a 20 20 to 10 before you do. You can stifle a Caracas. There's quite a lot of things you can do with it. But I don't think just a singleton stifle floating around the deck is good enough, to be honest. Um, if you want to go down the route of having weird enchantments to put in, you know, there's all sorts. You can have like Bolivian rings and nonsense like that. I just, I don't think that's worth doing. So, or, uh, I also want to say one other thing about this deck. Because it's blue, you don't get to play Choke, which is what you would normally play for like those grindy longer control decks. But we've got the Shark Typhoon recursion plan for that. So I think that's fine. But uh, yeah, I'm not sure this Stifle is doing enough in this deck list. Like if it was, um, I understand it's in there partly to Stifle a uh, initiative trigger because the initiative is kind of everywhere. Although we didn't play it today. I think it was the first league I played like all month that I haven't played against initiative actually. Um, but I don't think the Stifle is pulling its weight as a singleton either. If it was another crop rotation or another Elvish Reclaimer, probably a third Elvish Reclaimer would be nice because that's something that can attack through and get the initiative. It can also just do a lot of things and hook you up nicely. And it's good against control because it comes in under like dazes and things sometimes. Uh, or well, not, not, um, It can come in under dazes and if you've got the right setup, you might be able to protect from lightning bolts. And control decks are unlikely to spend their force of will on it, so you might get a bit of luck with it that way. And if it sticks, though, it just kind of fills out your whole game plan because you just go and get the pieces you need. And it's not as risky as a crop rotation where you have to sacrifice it. So I think Stifle for... Oh, well, I've just removed it from the deck there. Stifle for another Elvish Reclaimer would be where I would want to go with that. Other than that, I, th I thought the deck was really good, actually. It felt like I was doing powerful and relevant stuff. I felt like I had a decent amount of draws. It's not really a dedicated Dark Depths deck, which is more of my sort of jam. But if you watch my earlier league that I played with Simic Depths, uh, which this is kind of-ish like that, this feels like a better version of that deck. This feels like somebody's got rid of a lot of the fluff, things like Jaces and stuff like that, and they've stuck these Shark Typhoons in, which I think are very good in a deck that's looking to deploy a lot of mana. I, th I want more of them, to be honest, and I think... The ability to have a Maze of Ist like the other one I played did have is very useful as well as the Tabernacle. It doesn't have a Glacial Chasm, which could save you from a Grape Shot kill, maybe, but it can also let you turtle up against a bunch of stuff. Now, whether or not turtling up is what we want to do with this deck in that fashion with the Glacial Chasm, because it's certainly not free to do so. Um, so probably you don't want that, but I think this, this build is pretty good and I want kind of like to have more Shark Typhoons, I think is my main assessment here. Maybe you go even further deeper into the blue, but this build felt good. I haven't played it against Initiative, obviously, so I suspect that the reason why this configuration exists is to be the sort of the landy deck, but better against Initiative, hence why it's got the three plows, the three Ice Fangs, a couple of Shark Typhoons to steal the Initiative back. Even the Stifle that should be here, uh, that kind of makes me think that it was designed against a more initiative-heavy meta because initiative can be a bit of a pain matchup sometimes. So yeah, I like this deck and I would play it again and I'd probably make a few little tweaks. But uh, yeah, this is of the like sort of the longer, grindier Dark Depths decks I've played on my channel for Death December, I think this is probably my favorite and I think it's the most promising one. Um, Hydroblast just destroying all of the moon effects available is just so powerful. And I think that's worth doing as a side. I, I think the sideboard cards we're getting here in Hydroblast and the Fluster Storms are just better than, it also lets us interact on an axis that you can't normally interact with in the sort of Lanzi style deck. So I think this configuration is pretty good. Like. Do you actually need these white sword, these these plows? Uh, maybe again, you probably have to play more matchups to work out if the plow how useful the plows are. Like it's not costing us a lot. It's two savannas. It's basically all it's costing us to cast these. We don't have a tundra in the deck, which we did want to fetch once, but that's fine, I think. 
And yeah, this deck is good. And I've been rambling about it for a while. But this is, I think, my penultimate December video. So if you've been enjoying my content and you've been enjoying December, then please send me a subs uh, subscribe to my channel. It doesn't cost you anything. Uh, likes, comments, let me know what you want to see me play in the new year because I'm not going to be playing Dark Depths decks like three times a week. I'm going to be doing all sorts of other stuff instead. So let me know what you want to see. And I think we're just about done here. So this deck gets a big yes from me. All right. Thank you very much for watching and goodbye.